Welcome to the hottest movie review on the internet today, the A-List Review. I am your host, the Game Changer, Wes Truth. And you'll know if you've been following the channel that in a new series, I'm taking a look back at the great films and not so great films of the year 1997. And this is a film that I just discovered a little bit ago and I'm very intrigued to check out. My review of the 1997 animated psychological drama, Perfect Blue, coming up now. Mima Carrigo is a member of the J-pop group Cham, who decides to leave the group to become a full-time actress to work in film and television. Mima begins getting stalked by an obsessive fan named Me Mania, who's enraged by her quitting the group and changing her image. Soon after, gruesome murders begin taking place, and Mima begins to lose a grip on reality. So what did I think of Perfect Blue? I thought it's a stylish and creepy Japanese animated psychological thriller. It's based on the novel Perfect Blue Complete Metamorphosis by Yoshikazu Takuchi. The film is directed by the late Satoshi Khan in his directorial debut, but he's also known for helming films such as Millennium Actress, Tokyo Godfathers, and Paprika. The animation here looks great and is very different from most anime of the time, making most of the characters, other than Mima, of course, unattractive and even creepy. There are some very disturbing visuals from time to time, such as the scene Mima is performing in where she's being raped. There's also some haunting imagery from the murders, a highlight being the use of an ice pick. Just me mania himself is very unsettling as well. There's a number of moments of good suspense and tension throughout, too. It can be very hard to figure out what's real and what's not at times, as the film deals with blurring the line between reality and fantasy. There's even moments where the past and present bleed together. It gets to the point where Mima can't even figure out what's true or not in her life and is driven to the brink of insanity. Much of the film is certainly up for interpretation for each viewer as well. The story does have a surprising twist in its final act. The film gives us a lot of messages on pop culture and its toxic fans as well as commentary on the internet or at least as it was in the 90s. It's all still very relevant today, taking a look at who you are in your internet persona versus your actual persona. The color red is used throughout for some heavy symbolism, too. There's a lot going on in its brisk 81-minute runtime, and there are times that it feels a little bit rushed. The voice cast stars Junko Iwo as Mima Kuroji, the former pop idol who's transitioning to becoming an actress, Rika Matsumoto as Rumi, Mima's manager, a former pop idol herself who isn't thrilled with her change of career, Shinpachi Tutsuo as Todokoro, Mima's agent trying to get her a bigger role in television, and Masaki Akura as Mimania, the stalker who's become obsessed with Mima. Perfect Blue is an ambitious, effective, mind-bending, and sometimes uncomfortable experience that's become a big cult classic over the years. Number-wise, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10, which gives it the A-list rating of A-list approved. That's right, it gets the A-list. Seal of approval. All right, well, that's the show. I'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Westside of 515. Like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash West True Playlist. And of course, you can follow me on the Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at West A List. Until next time, Troop out.